So the outline is going to be the yeah, introduction of quantum Darwinism, what is meant by that. It's also called spectrum broadcasting, and you will see why. Then also with those memory effects. And then I will do the two works that we have done, one with the quantum Brownian motion, the other one with the phasing. Okay. So what is quantum Darwinism? Quantum Darwinism is a framework which tries to explain the appearance of, of a classical reality out of a quantum world. You can imagine we do have a theory which is not able to explain reality in this case with the everyday experience, which is classical. And this, this theory might be satisfactory in the microscopic level, but there's some gap. No? And at, at this point, we, we don't yet understand this, this transition. But Darwinism is a, is a step on the theory of the coherence, which tries to bridge a bit more the, this, this gap, let's say. Basically, it states or recognizes the, the role of the environment of a quantum system as a communication channel. And the basic premises are that many observers, so this would be the, let's say this would be the quantum system, which is surrounded by, a, by an environment, which is learning about it, and then observers are, are gathering information from the surroundings indirectly about the information about the system. So that many observers independently gather information by intersecting just small fragments. Typically, you are, for example, you want, want to learn about uh, the position of my center of mass. You are not coming here and touching me, but you are collecting the photons that I'm scattering from the lamps. Just a small fraction, and you're, from there you're learning, learning my position. Okay. And also, another premise is that redundant information, so many, many, many copies of this information uh, in the environment gives rise to objectivity, which means that many of you can later interweight each other and agree where it was. Okay. And this this means that my my cl the classical information of my center of mass position has to be copied massively around. Okay. Why Darwinism in the name? Because well the result of the process, which is classicality, is uh, the result of a selection of preferred so called pointer states or pointer information, which is redundantly proliferated. 
and in this, in this, there is some sense of thickness in, in the ability of a state for a given kind of information to survive the process of incoherence and so on, and spawn the highest amount of information per yeah. gene. So it's the survival of the fittest information. Okay, so let's go back a bit a step uh, before in the decoherence paradigm. So in this, in this paradigm, which is not very well seen here, I have the system and the environment. In fact, the environment is always uh, huge in the thermodynamic sense. So you never have access but to the macroscope, although macroscopic, but supposedly small fractions of it. And you have a Hamiltonian, which is Hamiltonian of the system, the, the environment, and the coupling. The coupling is typically, so the simplest kind of coupling would be an operator for the system and an operator for the environment. And this operator for the system typically uh, the pointer observable and, and it tells more or less the system where to decohere, let's say. And typically at the end of the, this process, the reduced density <coughs> matrix of the system becomes diagonal in the basis of this observable, which would be that thing. This system state is said to be classical, and I will tell you, I will give you some arguments so that you can see that this is purely classical and there's nothing wrong about it. Let's put an example. Take a two-level system, for example, like a spin, which is in a, in a superposition of up and down or zero and one. Okay. If you build the density matrix out of, out of that, it has the diagonal and the of diagonals, the diagonals are, are called the coherences. And if this system suffers a defacing, so the coherence which doesn't change the population, which has the diagonal but destroys the coherences, you have this matrix at the end of the process. Okay. Now let's see what are the probabilities of different things that we can measure and, and learn about this, this state. So for example, if we measure the set component of the spin, we are going to get the probability to get zero is one half, probability to get one is one half. This will be the right diagonals. They are as because we are we have written everything in the set basis. But if we choose, and this will be the same for the decoherent, decoherent spin. Okay? But if we go to the x component, which would be which would have this two eigenstates, we can measure the probability to have right or left, and this would be one and zero. However, you go to the decoherent one, have exactly the same probabilities. This means that all the directional information which was encoded in the state has been lost. Because in fact the state was encoded as an x eigenstate, and this information does not survive the process of decoherence, which is in the set direction, which is the pointer of several. Okay? Furthermore, so that you can relate it to more things that you know, if you take this the superposition and let it evolve under a magnetic field, it will evolve with a positive uh, exponent for the zero, negative for the one. The decoherent one will not evolve, so it's going to be exactly the same as before. And we can see that the set direction probabilities are kept as before, but the right and left probabilities are oscillating. This and here they are not. These oscillations can be, they are very similar to the inter interference fringes from a double slit experiment. So this could be left plus right, like this, when the double slit had not learned through which slit the electron has passed through. And this would be the situation where the someone knows through which slit the, the electron has passed. And you can learn nothing that will be no interference fringes. Okay. In this sense, a diagonal state, which I was writing before, is said to be classic. Okay, so coming and coming back again to the pointer basis and survival of the fittest information. So if you, if now we have a, a generic superposition, not one one half, one over square root of two here, and you make the uh, the state you go here, according to this uh, observable, you will have this. So you will have kept only the probabilities in the set component. Okay. So we can see that the information about the component that does not survive, only the point of information is kept. And now quantum Darwinism builds upon upon these observations. By saying that we typically never can access a quantum system directly, what I was telling you, 
Rather, we measure or observe it, its imprints on small pieces of its environment, which is not any more traced out, but it plays an active role of container and channel for the proliferation of information. So the, you can think of the environment as many, many uh, objects of which you, you can collect some of them. And now we can ask many questions about this new paradigm, which is, for example, which kind of information is gained by, by the environment, how is it acquired dynamically, how many chunks, pieces of the environment do I need to collect and of what size in order to learn about the classical information of, of the system and many other things which are more technical. Basically, we can say that the, the quantum Darwinism process has succeeded if fragments of the environment of small size, for example, the amount, the amount of photons, photons you are collecting right now that have been scattered by me is, is minute. So we have all this solid angle and you are only picking up the, the part in your, in your eye. Okay. And this is already enough to guess that I'm here and I'm not in a superposition or, or in a, another place. Okay. Also by moving around, so people there and people there agree on the position I am now, because many different fractions of different sizes are able to give this information. And also if a second observer, in this case it, it doesn't, it's not the thing because photons are, are destroyed when you, when you detect them. But if, typically, if a second observer comes and measures the same fraction of the environment, the same information should be there. So it's a kind of robustness of the classical information. And typically, this in quantum mechanics is, is uh, encoded in orthogonal records. We're going to quantify the amount of information a, a given fragment in the environment has about the system by the mutual information, which is defined as in classical physics, classical information theory, which is the entropy of the system, the entropy of the fragment, and minus the entropy of the joint probability. <coughs> Let me give you an idealized example of the quantum Darwinian process. Okay. Say that the initial state is a superposition, and I think that the, the environment is made of n pieces. All of them are initialized in a, in a product state. So they are independent, they, they are correlated among each other, nor with the system. Is this, not, this is not the notation. Uh, you, when you use that they are in a product state, this is not the notation. Right? This is a product state. Okay. Because it's only one. Okay. I mean, I, I can write that as a EI, E2. So so this is what I was thinking, looking for. <laughs> yeah. No, it's the same thing. <laughs> unless, the, unless there is a sum over other things, it's only one thing, it's a product. Okay, and then I, I let evolve this unique object in an ideal way, and then it should give me something like this. So there's a first term which is corresponds to the conditional evolution of the whole bar according to the outcome, and then there's there's the second one which is the evolution of the bar according to the down. Okay, and I ex I expect that these two evolutions are, are different enough. Okay, so that when I trace all the bath except for the fragment I am, I am inter intercepting to the photons in Maya, then I would have some state like this, which is some, a mixture of two things. The up projector in the system and the resulting, or, or resulting state in the, in, the, in the fragment, and the same thing for the, for the down, down outcome. And I should require that they are perfectly distinguishable. So, in this, if uh, these two objects are perfectly orthogonal, which means this thing, it means that by measuring the fragment, I measure the fragment and the fragment gives me down, I know for sure that the system is down, and vice versa. If, if this doesn't happen, if these resulting states are not orthogonal, which is what, what I meant by orthogonal records, encoding this distinguishability, I cannot really guess the, <coughs> what is the uh, state of the system. <coughs> In this case, which is the ideal, I can calculate the mutual information between the system and the fragment, and it's going to give me the entropy of the system. This is basically all the classical information you have about the probability distribution of the system. This has to be compared with two other extreme cases for the mutual information, which would be the totally uncorrelated case between the system and fraction, product, potential product which would give me zero, so, so the fragment doesn't have any information about the, the system, or the maximally entangled case, which would be 
this thing with the rest of the environment is product or there, there is no rest of the environment. For example, if I collect all the environment, I will have this, this thing, and then the mission information will be twice ages. This means that the, the fragment has something like the full quantum information of the system. Okay? So it would be zero for no information, HS for only the classical information, and two HS for the full quantum information, more or less. So we need to understand these two. These two. Yeah, if, if the I mean, you have you have to compare uh, typically what you think is a mixture, an incoherent mixture, which is this thing. Okay. It's very different from that thing. Here you, you have full information because the total state is zero, so the joy density is zero, and the reduced the reduced entropies are, are maximum, so you have twice H's. So here the total state is two, and in the previous one it was a mixture. It's a mixture. And you only can get the um, I mean, it's not always obvious to relate these H's to what you know about the system, but it's a well-known result from the classical information theory that, that this is the most you can get out of something like this. Which is a classical distribution only one part. So all the, the Shannon entropy of these uh, probabilities gives you the total information that you can get. Okay, and this uh, classification, this informational classification, allows us to, to draw what is typically termed a uh, partial information plot, which after decoherence means that let's check how many how much information do the pieces of the environment have according to the to their size. And here I plot the, the size of the of the pieces of the environment, which I call fraction F. And here I plot how much information they have from zero to two HS. And if everything has gone well in the <laughs> and classically classically it has emerged, you will see some curve like this red one, in which already small fragments have a close to full classical information. Okay. And by going to higher and higher amount of photons, you don't learn too much more until you collect all the photons I have scattered since you turn the lamp on. And then you could, in principle, learn that I'm really in superposition and not in a unique position. Okay. Which you can only learn if you collect all the information I have inside of Okay. This plateau is called the classical plateau. And means that everything has has gone well. I can give you a figure of merit to to see how well it has gone, and could be done just by having a deficit of information. So let's say what is the size of a of a fragment which has already 98 percent of the of the information, and this two percent would be the delta. And then I would draw a line and say, okay, fragments of this size have already 98 percent of this of this information. The, the smaller the fragment size the better the okay. A final observation which I, I think is very important and basically it's the motivation of, of all these works is the fact that if you pick up, so let's take my center of mass and all the photons that have, have been started since the beginning of the talk. I pick randomly a state of this Hilbert space and it's going to, to be flagrantly quantum and it's going to give you this uh, green curve. This green curve means that the unit to collect half of them in order to learn just the classical information. In fact, if you collect a bit more, you can practically get all the quantum information. And this is the most typical thing. Most typical quant uh, quantum states do not, do not have this, uh, do not ful fulfill all this. So we need to explain how they emerge. Okay. And in fact, the explanation for why they emerge has to do with how interactions in nature are so the, the only explanation that we can have. So the green line is what you get a typical experiment. Okay. You think in the middle space, a yeah. random state will give you that. It's not a random experiment, it's, it's, yeah. it's just states. If you have well, states... How do you pick that random? I mean, you, you assume that any possible state of this many body system has equal probability. Yes, but it doesn't matter because these has measured zero. 
So classical reality has measured zero. Okay. You know the possible quantum states that you can pick up, as you can imagine. Maybe in other words, I mean, how we define this fraction when classical uh, nature appears in, in the game? Do you have this it for this? For assigning a fraction of sex? Yes. For, right. for, for when this happens? Yes, no. exactly. Yes. So I mean, there's a... Don't confuse people, I mean, yeah, because it's a simply a model system. Because in each system, of course, you have uh, different fractions. And depends yes. on yes. Exactly. Because it's not a virus of the behavior. This is a different, different problem. The problem is that finding out when this happens and why right. this happens. Right. So be clear then for people. Yeah. Right. I'm going to introduce several models where this happens and several where it doesn't. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to uh, introduce also some recent refinements of the theory that I would like to highlight. There's this paper by uh, for the family and Corbett that appeared uh, last year, and they they try to redefine what, what is meant by objectivity, and they come up with this definition: a state of the system S exists objectively if many observers can find out can find out the state of S independently and without perturbing it. Okay, this would seem like a rather uh, inoffensive uh, sentence, but. Finally, they are able to show ma mathematically that the state needs to have this this form, and it's the only form that you can have if it if it's if it's to fulfill this condition. And it's basically what, what we have seen before. It's uh, it's a sum sum over i of the probabilities of outcomes in the pointer basis for the system, and then a, a collection of, of branched and correlated uh, fragments of the environment, which have orthogonal support. This means that different parts of the environment are only correlated through the indices. So up and down would be the i. And each of these species is orthogonal to each other. So the row, so this one for the up and this one for the down would be completely orthogonal. Okay. And in this sense, they could be unperturbed, unperturbed by repeated measurements if they are included in an orthogonal support. It's, they call it the spectrum broadcast form uh, because it broadcasts the, the spectrum of the pointer basis in, of, into the environment. And what, what they say basically is that this information, uh, this mutual information thing, it's okay, but it's not enough. The quantum dimension process should be judged by having a look at what is the final state <coughs> of the decoherence. Okay. Because in fact, if this state fulfills this condition of the plateau, but the reverse implication is not true. And finally, and most important, there is this generalization by Brandao, Piani, and Polodecki in the Nature Communications in 2014, in which they, they are able to show that whenever there is a setting that you have a system and an environment, which, and the environment is big enough, any quantum mechanical dynamics is very similar to a measure and prepare map. Measure and prepare map uh, measures the pointer basis, pointer observable of the system and it distributes local copies of its content. So this means that the process of, of Darwinism, of encoding the observable and proliferating it in, into the environment, is absolutely generic for all dynamics of quantum mechanics. So these are result of quantum mechanics. The only problem here, in order to complete the description, is that these local copies, of course, can be distinguishable or not, depending on whether they are orthogonal or not. And this is the, the point which is uh, lacks a, a, a generic answer, let's say. And <coughs> yeah, it says that the only, this only guarantees that the fair observable is the only information that can be retrieved. However, these copies can, need not be distinguishable. However, if they are, they also show that the, the different observers looking at different fractions will agree on the <coughs> outcomes of, and the description of the system. Okay. So finally, the open question, commenting is which system bad dynamics are able to fulfill this full availability <coughs> or distinguishability condition, meaning that the, the information in the bath is retrievable. <coughs> Thank 
could you again? This one's like two deck. They work out the, the example of the thermal photonic environment, which elim eliminates in a given direction a dielectric sphere, which is in a superposition of two different positions. And make, well, they, they are able, able to show that after some, some fi finite time of illumination, you reach the, the level. Okay. As I can give you a, a, some, some numbers like with the illumination of, from the sun, a uh, grain of dust of the size of one micrometer would become spectrum broadcasted in one microsecond and faster when it becomes uh, bigger. Okay. And there are some peculiarities if the illumination is non thermal or, or direct, non directional. But okay. So, the, the full availability condition for the dynamics has been shown up to now for pure defacing uh, environments initiated in a tensor product state. Also, the illuminated sphere has been uh, understood in, in many different regimes and so on. And also, Brownian motion with an ohmic environment, this means Markovian evolution. And we have contributed in two ways, which I will explain now. One of them is saying in the Brownian motion what happens when you have memory effects, that is when the typical uh, dissipation is, is broken in some sense. And also what happens when, when you have this defacing, but the, the environment is not prepared in a perfectly blank state, let's say, or in a tensor product state. Okay, so let me introduce you the, the first work and the first model. It's called the Rubin model. It's a microscopic model. It's a semi-finite linear harmonic chain, and it serves as a microscopic model for a for an ohmic, ohmic environment of a quantum Brownian motion. And by modifying some of its parameters, you can you can change the dynamical regimes very much. You have the system, and there's a, there's the chain here. They are coupled through this small value. Uh, K and the, the chain has uh, on site potential from at zero and they are coupled through a coupling strength G. And the system, of course, is coupled by, by an XX or position position interaction. Okay? You can diagonalize the, the bath and then you would see that, the, that the, the mass, our system, is coupled to all of the item modes with given couplings G tilde. And now the, the coupling has, has this form. Okay? Basically, you can describe the dynamics of the system uh, in many, many ways, but an, a very inter interesting one is the Langevin equation, similar to the classical one. You have the typical uh, oscillatory part here. You have a friction kernel, which depends on all the history of the velocity of the system. And then you have a forcing coming from the, from the environment. This uh, damping kernel, its Fourier transform, can be defined through the spectral density, which is typically what, what is introduced. From quantum settings. Here you can calculate this uh, spectral density. It's very easy to calculate. And it has basically this shape. It's a bump which goes from omega zero, which is the size potential of the each oscillator of the bath chain, and goes to a maximum reservoir uh, frequency, which can be calculated easily. In fact, if you go you put the on site potentials to zero, then the curve goes uh, goes to here. And then you have you would have a uh, spectral density which is proportional to omega. And if you do you throw these to very high values, you would have that the spectral density gives you a, a flat uh, friction kernel. So the Fourier transform of this kernel will be flat, which should be something equivalent to white noise and Markovian dynamics. Okay. But by by not doing that and not having this too far away, it's going to be no Markovian. No more than anything, I think you have heard uh, several times, but I can more or less rem remind you. Basically, the, in the intuitive picture the intuitive picture is that if you put, for example, some system that's in a, a thermal uh, reservoir, it will dissipate and finally it's going to reach the thermal state. Okay. And if you put two, two very different initial states, they, they are going to be every time more and more, they are going to be every time uh, more uh, indistinguishable. So, for example, we can measure this normal covariance by, by having a look at the, how the distinguishability between two initial states is changing in time. It's perfectly, the evolution is perfectly, Markovian is going to dissipate 
continue to extend with the uh, monotons. And no more coming can be attributed to some uh, reversion of this process of dissipation. So some information or energy is going back from the back to the system. In this model, the <coughs> normal magnetic properties is well known. It was studied by us in, in this other paper. And what you can see basically is that uh, it's this red curve, if you modify the, the frequency of the system, it's going, it's going to be more Markovian when it's basically resonant with the full spectrum of, of the bat. So if the frequency of the system is here inside the spectrum of the bat, it's going to energy and information is going to flow continually to the environment and it's going to decay to, to a thermal state, let's say. If you are very far away the tune, of course, you are, the, the system is not going to dissipate because of lack of resonance and therefore it's going to have a unitary dynamics of the no dissipation. So you cannot even talk about normal event. And in the edges, you have almost resonance and therefore the energy and information is going to bounce back and forward from system to chain. Okay? And this is why this uh, go on uh, back and forth of the distinguishability is going to give you much higher values. If we now check the, what happened with the Darwinism here. I can make you some, some plots of the plateau for the different cases. Of course, if, if you are in the resonant part, here I plot the, this fragment size, which was a figure of merit. If I am in the resonant part, the fragment size is going to, to 1, basically. So already one oscillator in the chain of the bat is able, is able to tell you all the classified information <coughs> about the system. However, <coughs> if you detune the system from the bat, it's going to be, it's going to break this process. In fact, if you look at the, at this situation, you are going to have a, the red one, which is a very good plateau. If you are in the edge, it's going to be a bit worse. And if you are outside, it's going to be very bad. What happens? And this is more or less the. <coughs> so this means that if you have that frequency, so what was that yes. frequency? Was the, the system frequency? The system frequency. Yeah, so the, the, the bath is fixed. Okay. Is fixed. So you have a frequency of the system, and that saying that the system will be classical, will behave classically. Yes. Is that what you're saying? And then if that frequency is very tuned, so that it doesn't interchange information with the, the, with the environment properly, mm -hmm. then we'll keep the quantum features. Exactly. The information is reverts back again. Only to say that uh, uh, conceptually it is not that the, that the system will behave classically. I mean, the system behaves all the same. Only, there's only things about what kind of information is spread around. It's the only thing which is classical. Because if, if I call it what I, what I was saying before, I think it's very important. If you are able to collect all the photo data, I was in a superposition initially, and you collect all the photons, I am still in superposition. So, I mean, you measure that, exactly. So, I mean, you measure just one, one oscillator of the environment, the information you get is the one you get from classic. So, the classic, yes. Yes. you will get, if you get the information from all the oscillators, you can't recover the quantum information of the state. Yes. Yes. Yeah, at the end, the, the full system plus body is in a pure state. If it starts in a yeah. pure state, the total thing is a unitary dynamics. Uh, here there is some sort of philosophical question because in, in typical the coherence, you assume that the interaction of the system with the bar makes that the system loses some properties of all of you. If you look at the system which are coherent, it loses the properties. But you assume that this is a, something that happens, the system loses the coherence. Here you use this bar interaction to say, well, the information that we get from the system tells us that the system behaves such a way. Hmm. But the system remains the same. It is the same thing in both cases. In, in the coherence case, we, the only thing that happens is that you lose local accessibility to the full quantum description. So the diagonal form of the decohered state only means that the information is, is somewhere else. And information is somewhere else means that I mean, you, when, you, when you plug the coupling to the, uh, a bigger environment and you obtain a mass equation or whatever, you are neglecting the environment. But the full, the full thing is unitary. So the information is around. You only lose local accessibility. Something like, I mean, in a thermal state is never really a thermal state. It's only to, to us that we can only access, I don't know, 
where you plug the thermometer and so on. You don't know the structure of the energy. Yeah, but when you have two systems that, that interact and they become be coherent, this is something that happens to the two systems. What you mean then is that one of the systems is not able to see the information from the other, or something like that. You put two systems and then let them interact, they become yeah. entangled. Yes. If you, but, but if you trace out one of them, this seems like a maximally mix, yeah. therefore no information. And, and then it's no longer entangled with the other one. No, well, it, is, yeah, it, is. it is. Only that only by looking at one of them, you cannot learn. Okay. And if you look at both and do correlated measurements, you, do, you learn that they are entangled and in a pure state. Okay. The problem is accessibility. I mean, you, you cannot interrelate the full universe to, <laughs> to learn the initial state of the big panel. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay, this is the long time behavior. But if you. If, um, this, this, thing, this thing with ability was measured. Um, so this one, Markovian measure, uh, was telling you that the, there is some oscillation some time oscillations in the distinguishability between the two different initial states. There should be something similar with, the, um, with this, this figure of merit. I mean, the information is going to the environment and back and forth when you are in the edge. So this, there should be the possibility to define a non-monotonicity also of this quantity, which if you do, this, this ring curve coincides more or less very well with the, with the measure of normal value, which means that it's highly oscillatory here in the edges. Um, yeah. And it's not in the other cases. This can be understood also from some microscopic model where the, what I told you that these orthogonal reports in the environment can be calculated more or less what they should give, and they, they are depending on some dynamical factors which we understand. And I'll stop here which I want to speak a bit more of the other model. So this means uh, that we have introduced a model in which you can tune the dynamical regimes. There are some regimes which are ohmic and the thing flows smoothly. And, and when, when it doesn't, uh, Darwinism is partially broken. Okay? We introduce another model with, where there's some other aspect which you can understand, which is how the state, not the dynamics, how the state of the bath is able to break this process too. Okay? And now we will do a central spin, which is the system, in a spin environment, which and the spin environment, so the dynamics is going to be all the time, all the, not the cases the same. And now we are going to change only the quantum phase which the bath has been initialized on. Okay. <coughs> so you have the central system with a given magnetic field. And I have an interaction which is dephasing. So it doesn't change the energy of the system. But it, it only uh, eliminates the off diagonals as in the first example. And what I consider now is that the state of the bath is just the different phases, quantum phases, at zero temperature of this model, which is very well known. It has different, different phases with different properties. Basically, given by the proportion of, the, of this part and the mag magnetic field which is applied. Okay? This is also called the XY isotropic with field in set direction. Basically, this, uh, this model Hamiltonian has phases which, if the magnetic field is strong enough, it's ferromagnetic. Otherwise, if the, the phase is more complicated and it has some correlation, it has fermionic, fermionic excitations inside and so on. So, this H, the strength of this H, which initializes the bath, is going to tell us uh, the properties that, that we want. Um, here I plot the partial information plot. So, mutual information versus fragment size. And we have used a, a bath environment of 14 spins, which is already very high. And I, I, we have been changing the, the initial value of H, which initializes the phases. And what we see is that basically the ferromagnetic phase gives you a perfect plateau. So, already one spin has full, full information. And as you decrease below the critical level, the H, it goes worse and worse. Okay. If I do the same thing with the normal organity, I obtain the same behavior. So for values of H higher than the critical one, I have zero normal organity, so the, the evolution is purely Markovian. 
and otherwise it's more and more normal for them. The microscopic explanation for this is basically in order to have a good plateau, what we need is that small fragments catch okay, are able to absorb full, full classical information of the system. When the system is in a ferromagnetic phase, so H higher than the critical one, the the, frag, the see the, the spin bath is initialized in a like a blank, blank register state. So each of the spins is in a pure state, which uh, knows nothing about the others. So it's safe, very well able to, to learn about the system. However, when you go well, to other values, the the initial phase are more bipartite bipartite than multipartite entanglement, and therefore this means that it has less ability to learn. So it already has is correlated with the rest of the the things in the environment and, and is not able to absorb the information from the system. And in the same way that this affects Darwinism, it also affects the coherence. The coherence is just the process by which the environment is learning and getting with, uh, with the system. So, to conclude, we have seen that the inability of the environment to learn and get correlated with the system can be a consequence of the dynamics due to a frequency mismatch or also because the environment is too entangled so as to absorb any, any more information. And these two, thing, and these two things it seem to, to provide a, a monotonic incoherence and also absence of a proliferation of information. And thank you for your attention. studies or evidences that support this notion of quantum Darwinism? Yeah, there was uh, this, I think only one paper which is experimental about this. And it's what, what do you think about the scars? I never I never read it seriously. <laughs> they saw they saw I mean they were studying something else, mm -hmm. they saw some evidences of, of, of a process of evolution of, uh, of information so I think cascaded proliferation of information. But I cannot tell you. Um, in general, they they are not interested in an experiment about it. Why not? This is more more a question of principle. They are not even theorists are interested in this question. Let's put it another way. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say that it's a fundamental question, mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, even Zurek, Zurek is still working a lot. There is a nice paper in physics today, uh, this year or a few months ago, about it. And he's also, for instance, um, commenting about experimental realization. And he put it like they are still not, uh, they, they, they did not arrive there yet. Something that is still uh, uh, quite demanding uh, in yeah. an experimental platform. So there is a, it's, it's not an easy experiment. It seems that the most reasonable realization would be an optical realization of the photons, because actually we have seen that actually the, all the, the whole paradigm in other platforms in which you have correlations between fragments and parts and so on, just falling down. So an optical realization would be more promising, but there are still some difficulties. So it's, it's not only lack of interest, there is also a difficulty in realizing this kind of experiment that at the end are more related to fundamental questions. It's not uh, related to immediate applications. But it's not only an interpretation, it really is a falsifiable or <coughs> verifiable theory, isn't it? Yes, yes, it's a fundamental question about uh, how the, the classical reality can emerge. So it's an important fundamental question to tell the theory of the world. Yes, it's true. I think the experiment will come. Yeah, I mean, there's a fundamental limitation there because the really large amount in the environment. I mean, you need to do quantum tomography of the environment in order to calculate all the quantities, take that it has a spectrum board for that form. And there are experiments in quantum tomography? Yes, of, of small amounts of English. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about classical Darwinism, the, the theory of evolution, one thinks on, uh, that things happen across generations. So there's reproduction, and then reproduction, and proliferation, proliferation, several generations. But here I see that only the system uh, touches the environment uh, 
to proliferate once and that's it. Is the, uh, I am missing something? So it's, uh, yeah, that yeah, means yeah, something yeah. else? So it is reproduction of the information as time goes on? Or, or not? Or is it just, uh, yes, it is. I mean, in its simplest form, the, for example, the harmonic oscillator, I mean, there's a position, position, and the front on the ground emotion. The oscillator is oscillated, and the environment is learning its position. If you go to the running a picture, to the oscillating picture of the, of the oscillator, you see that the, the environment is learning the more or less instantaneous value of the position. So the, the environment is, is encoding all the oscillation. And this is the simplest form. Probably if you check complicated scenarios, you could see that if inside the environment, there's also from all the proliferation of something with respect of units of the environment. And also, Surek is speculating whether this has to do anything, and this has anything to do with the normal, this natural selection and all this thing. But this is a wide speculation, I would say. Just a fancy name. It's an analogy. I mean, it's a, because there was already the part of the fittest state that there was a previous work of him, and then it was this idea about the proliferation, and then the two concepts were it's an analogy. I think it was also near to the period of near, near the Darwinism, near the, the Darwin Seminary or something like that. It was just inspired by. Other questions? Lana? Why do you use always a kind of initial period state for the environment? Because it's like assuming that you have perfect knowledge of the environment for your interaction with the system. Makes it simple. There are some results already. I mean, every, every time you, you go to mixed states, and with the, with the buffers in a mixed state, it's going to be the more refractory to the information that's coming from the system. So you learn less and so on. Same thing with the, the system is not so critical, I would say. So, for instance, if the environment is in a thermal state, mm -hmm. If it maintains its energy, then it's not going to, to catch more information. The environment is in a thermal state only approximately. For example, my chain was in a thermal state, but it's able to learn because it's never only a thermal state, it's a thermal state. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I had to comment that. that about the role of the detector in this format. Uh, you have the system, the environment, and but is there a role also associated to the specific detector, or the detector is just taking these pieces of the environment and just tracing out the, the The detector is the pieces of the environment. So you go to an oscilloscope, and it's showing a picture, but pictures, every microsecond is updated. But it's from a register, it's from a blah, blah. I mean, the, from, the point, from this point to the problem of the collapsing the measure, which measurement is realized and which not, which is not included here because it's, that, this is a collection of probabilities in the classical sense, and this is another story. This philosophy will, will never close, I think, the, the detector problem. But the fact that in the detector there are orthogonal records which can be distinguished and, and Someone that later comes to the oscilloscope and sees the same picture, I think it's clarified by the very well. That's the answer. Yeah, more or less. Well, I understand that well, the detector is just something which is outside this. You are some kind of idea of uh, extraction of information from the environment by the detector. Let's take your right. Can you can you relate your question to your eye and intersecting fragments of photon? I mean your 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 eye detector is not perfect. Still by collecting a, a reasonable amount of photons from my scattered ones, you are able to know that I'm here. Yeah, but maybe that's a very my brain is processing information. Yeah, yeah. I don't know well, from the know. from the eye to the brain is a mystery. What I mean say, I mean the the collapse. Yeah, yeah. 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 that is, is collecting the photo and uh, giving a number on the screen and detecting something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it was just a comment about no, no, there's you, always, you didn't mention there's the, always a gap. Yeah.
Rashid. Yes, I mean, uh, you mentioned, but somehow didn't discuss it, this is important. You mentioned point states. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is the role of point states here? Because then, for people, it becomes clear that point states play an important role in quantum dominance. Yes. Point states here are the up and down. Because this is the interaction observable with the environment. And in this example, it would be the position of the system, only that the position of the system does not commute with the Hamiltonian of the system, and this is why the oscillator is oscillating and the instantaneous position is recorded in the environment, if the environment is fast enough, of course. So this is the point. <coughs> the inter states are the position states. I would say the two inter states is more classical nature. Uh, because and uh, common to our observation, <coughs> this is a quite wide uh, area in quantum dot business. Uh, and there are experiments, uh, one of the lead of this, so I can give you reference, they talk how they measure manifestation of classical dynamics in quantum transport. Why quantum dots? And this, uh, what was discovered in quantum dots, <coughs> Use it now on day <coughs> as well. I mean, the point is that if you uh, arrange your system such a way that you excite certain states, which are point states, classical states, then you can uh, regulate dynamics uh, knowing what you're doing. But, uh, for example, a very simple case you have a billiard which is, uh, say, stadium, chaotic, right? However, in chaotic billiard, you have classical states. A uh, very small amount, which is a uh, uh, risk in gallery mode, you know about this, right? Mm -hmm. So if you adjust to billiard, certain way uh, leads, then you excite only this uh, uh, risk in gallery modes, and then you have transport, which is almost behave like classical. Mm -hmm. So probably you, you should see uh, the name of this. I mean, if you come mm -hmm. to me, I give you mm -hmm. you ask about this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the literature about point states is much, much bigger than about quantum um, because it's uh, no, they, they, uh, when uh, okay, Zurich uh, introduces, I mean, very, very upset. <coughs> I mean, but then people start to repeat after him. Mm. Okay, quantum dominism, manifestation, blah blah blah. But it's basically that you excite certain states <coughs> and you have certain condition, mm. certain. Way. But this is like the basic. I mean, we all agree that there are these point states. There are, I mean, and then this is something else. It's about how different portion of the environment would encode the information. <coughs> so it's like a step further. It's just a, a second step. It's just building it. Okay. So it's and this Fernando say is here that the point of state are the fun for the position for the case of spin, the up and down in Z direction. They would change if you change the interaction in Newtonian, but this physics is, is like more more well known. I mean, the new things which you try to bring, I mean, this of course, uh, how to relate to entanglement. And this is maybe important thing. How it relates to? Entanglement. Of I what? Mean, no, you try to demonstrate that entanglement and this is quantum dynamism somehow related. And this is maybe important point which you I mean, what I found for me, you. But the time we were speaking about Fernando was the time between the system and the environment. Right. No. So. I was only talking about. Yes, you, when you were giving at the, at the beginning. Oh, okay. Yes. So. That, I mean, this is uh, another question. How, the, how all the information and time is distributed and what is the situation? Just saying in another way, this is already tough enough when you have a monopartite system, then of course you can increase the size of the system and add the ingredients to yeah, it's, it's like a, 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 an agrostat program going into different states and you need to have a larger system. <coughs> so maybe just, I, I just realized you didn't put the reference here. The yeah, I mean, was yeah. suggesting paper, so there is a scientific paper, a uh, scientific report, uh, Ah, uh, sorry, yes, we did this one. Mm. And as far as I understand, the CR papers, right? Or not? Yeah. Sorry, the, yes, I mean, These are uh, our papers? No, no, fine. I mean, simply I say that I can mention you other. Yes, of course. I was just about. exchanging. Right. Okay. Right. Any further questions or comments?
Thank you. 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 Thank you.